Hello and welcome to my workshop. In this video, I'm playing with a bit. This bit. This is a 45 degree lock miter bit and as the name suggests it does two things at once. Number one it creates the 45 degree miter and this profile right here creates the tongue and groove which interlocks with each other and makes the joint really stable. It also provides extra surface area for the glue to adhere. When I was seeing commercials for this particular bit it's always been on rectangular and parallel boxes. And for this project, and to make it a little bit more interesting, I've decided to make the uh, boxes for this particular planter box. As you can see, the joint will still be at 90 degrees, but the sides are tapered and all at different angles. So it is going to make it a little bit more interesting. And that is also going to be a trial run for one of my future projects. Uh, as you remember from one of my previous videos when I was explaining the challenges I'm facing in one of my selling locations, uh, the new display cabinet that I wanted to build contained tapered legs and of course the wood that I need is very thick for that one. One way to do it is to splurge money on the really thick wood which is also low in supply. Number two is to get pieces of wood and glue them together to get to that thickness that I need. And number three is to get pieces together and glue them to make a hollow leg. So this 45 degree lock miter bit is perfect for this so that uh, it creates a nice 45 degree angle and there is no sight of a joint. I'll be using 5 8 or 15 millimeter Baltic Butch for the uh, planter project. And the hardest thing with this bit is actually aligning it. Uh, if it's aligned at the center, and I'll explain that in a <laughs> bit. <laughs> uh, if it's aligned in the center, then I'm gonna have less adjustments to make later on. And I'm gonna explain what alignment in the center means. So first of all, we need to know the exact measurements of this particular um, piece of Baltic birch. Uh, I know I mentioned it is 15 millimeters, but you know, it's always nominal. It, there is always that little bit of a variance. And for this particular piece, it's actually 14.7 millimeters. So it's slightly under 15, and that's where we need to know the exact measurements. Now, if I take some of my other scrap pieces that I'm gonna be using for the alignment, there are about 14.7, 14.8. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be using, 14.7, and take my calculations uh, that way. So what does aligning at the center mean? So we already measured the thickness of the material, and we know where the half point would be, which is 7.35 or 7.4 millimeters. So what that means is on the bit, we need to align the bottom of the tongue cutting edge, or groove cutting edge, whatever uh, side you're looking at, this particular edge, we need to align that with the center. Uh, I have decided to actually go to the table saw and cut away some material at the right height so that when I'm at the router and aligning it, everything is going to come nicely and I can basically see uh, the wood touching the, the bit. So, let's get to it. <laughs> And that is 7.35, so I think we can call it good. Uh, so let me just do a few extra passes. The idea of me doing this is as follows. So this is going to be our bit and when it's put on the router table, if I want to make the adjustment, I can easily come with the, the wood 
and not being obstructed by the mitre down here, I can easily come and see if the center of that mitre uh, cut is actually touching the wood. Uh, conversely, if we didn't have that uh, wood cut out, what we're going to do is when we go to the router table and that uh, the wood is going to hit the bit right here and as you can see we cannot easily gauge whether it's at the right height or not so we're going to be making more adjustment that way. So with this I just come in and align it. Now let's get to the router table and see if uh, the, the theory in practice so for theory into practice, um, as you can see, if I didn't have a groove cut the way I did, uh, when I, once I align the wood right next to the bit, the wood touches the lower part of the bit. And if I had a pencil mark on the wood, I have to be eyeballing when that pencil mark is in alignment with the lower part of the lock miter bit. But because I have the groove, You can see how easily the wood touches the uh, portion that I needed to touch and I can basically see the alignment at the bottom right there. Uh, I think right now we are fairly consistent so I'm going to leave it there. The second thing that we need to adjust is the positioning of the fence so that when we cut with the bit it cuts that nice 45 degree angle right here and the top is actually untouched because that is our guiding piece on the fence so what i do is i take i, I position the piece and i take a ruler and kind of freely by hand i spin the router bit and just look for when the uh, the bit catches the the ruler so as we can see right here it catches it and moves it. So we take our fence and put it towards us. Now we can, now it, again, it catches and moves it, but not by that much. So we will adjust slightly. Now we do not catch anything. So we're in a, in a good position. And I'm going to run a few passes on two separate pieces and join them together and see the result. After a small adjustment, this is what we have. I've used the same work pieces as I did before, just the opposite side. And now we have a nice flat surface and a pretty stable joint. As you can see, the bigger piece doesn't want to fall off. If you want to see it in a 90 degree corner joint, there it is. I will be showing how to do this later in the video, but for now, I know that the tool is set at the right height and at the right depth. Now it's time to do the rest.
And this brings another successful project to a close. There won't be any stain or varnish put on this because that's what the client asked for. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Now, what do I think about this, the bit? Uh, there's definitely good sides and a bad side. The good side is that with minimum of two passes, I was able to create a nice stable joint. And there lies the inherent problem. Uh, doing it in as few passes as possible, it means that there is going to be a lot of wood cut, especially down here at the bottom. And that has the tendency to heat up the bit, and when there is heat, there is also dulling. Uh, I was using 5 8 Baltic Birch, and I definitely smelt a few burnouts, uh, so I had to turn off the router and wait for the bit to cool down before I proceeded. Now, if I was using hard maple or, or any uh, tropical dense wood, uh, probably I'm going to be doing this joint in maybe five or six passes, even more. Uh, just so that I keep the bit nice and sharp, otherwise it's just going to get dulled in one or two passes. Now, am I going to use it for my upcoming uh, display case project? <laughs> you have to wait for my next video. There were a few developments that happened during the making of this uh, project, so I'm going to tell you that in my next video, so stay tuned. If you like this video, make sure to like, share and subscribe, and also hit the notification bell so that you get notified of my next video release. Also, follow me on all social media channels, all the links are in the description.